Hi students, welcome to the fourth week of our session. Before we begin, don't forget to get your periodic table of elements, pen, and paper. For today's session, we're going to discuss chemical reactions and chemical equation. What is chemical reaction? Chemical reactions occur when chemical bonds between atoms are formed or broken. It involves chemical change of atoms and molecules. This picture shows different examples of chemical reactions. These are the types of chemical reactions. First, we have synthesis reaction. Synthesis reaction is one in which two or more substances are combined to form a more complex one. In other words, synthesis reaction is a combination reaction. The general form of synthesis reaction is A plus B to form AB. Next, we have decomposition reaction. A decomposition reaction works quite the opposite to a synthesis reaction. It is a reaction where a more complex substance breaks apart into simpler ones. A general form of a decomposition reaction can be written as AB to form A plus B. The third that we have is the single replacement reaction or the single displacement reaction. It is when a pure element switches places with another element in a compound. It is in the general form AB plus C to form AC plus B or A plus BC to form AC plus B. The fourth that we have is the double displacement reaction. In this reaction, it is in which the cation of the two reactants switch places to form two completely different products. A general form of this reaction is AB plus CD to form AD plus CB or AC plus BD. Another type is a combustion reaction in which a fuel will react with oxygen to produce a gaseous product. In combustion reaction, the fuel is always an organic compound and it reacts with oxygen, gas, and the product is always carbon dioxide and water. The last type of reaction is the neutralization reaction or the acid-base reaction. It is a reaction between an acid and a base and water is one of the products. It is a special type of double displacement reaction. What is chemical equation? Chemical equation is a shortened method of writing a chemical reaction. In other words, it is the representation of chemical reaction. These are the parts of chemical equations. So we have the reactants on the left side and product on the right side. We also have the subscript as the number of atoms and the state of matter that is enclosed in a parenthesis, which are solid, liquid, or gas coefficient that determines the number of molecules and the arrow which means yield or to produce. Now let's try to transform a word equation to chemical equation. First example, adding sodium oxide to water produces sodium hydroxide. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do is to analyze the given word equation. So based on this word equation, we have the keywords adding and reduces. So from these two terms, we are be able to know which are the reactant and which is the product. Okay, so first let's have the adding. So we all know adding means plus sign. So which substance are we going to add? It is the sodium oxide and the water. Next, we have produces. So basically, when we say produces, there will be a product. And which is the product? It is the sodium hydroxide. So based on that analyzation, we are be able to have the simplified word equation which is sodium oxide plus water produces arrow sodium hydroxide which is the product. Okay, now we have the simplified word equation which we have the chemical substances and the symbols. 
So now, these substances will be written as chemical formulas. So the first step is to write the chemical formula of the following substances. First, let's have sodium oxide. So how do we write the chemical formula for sodium oxide? So we all know that sodium has a symbol of Na. And by looking at your periodic table, you will be able to know its charge, which is positive 1. So if it's positive 1, you don't have to write 1. So next, we have oxide. So we all know that oxide came from oxygen. And the symbol for oxygen is O with the charge of negative 2. And then following the rule, in formula writing, for ionic compound, we have to crisscross. So when we crisscross, we will have Na2O. So therefore, the chemical formula for sodium oxide is Na2O. So next, bring down the sign, which is plus. Or the add sign. So we have water. We all know that this water is a common name and has a chemical formula of H2O. Okay? And now let's proceed. We have arrow, which means produces or yields. And then we have the product, which is sodium hydroxide. So now let's have the chemical formula for sodium hydroxide. So again, we have sodium. The symbol is Na with a charge of positive 1. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. We have OH with a charge of negative 1. And then crisscross, we will have the chemical formula for sodium hydroxide as NaOH. Therefore, we have the chemical equation as Na2O plus H2O yields or produces NaOH. So this equation is still an unbalanced equation. So we need to balance it to comply with law of conservation of mass. And how do we balance chemical equation? These are the steps in balancing chemical equation. First, identify and list down the elements found on the reactant and product side. Second, write the number of atoms of each element on the compound on both sides. Third, determine which elements have different number of atoms. Fourth, put coefficients before the compound that contains the element with an equal number of atoms. The balancing equation is a trial and error process. So we need to try different coefficients for us to be able to balance a certain equation. Right. So now let's try to balance this chemical equation. So in balancing this chemical equation, we have to follow the steps that we have shown earlier. First step, identify the elements found on the compound on the reactant and the product side. So on the reactant, we all know we have Na, O, and then H. Also, we have Na, O, H for the product. Okay? So next step is to count the number of atoms on the reactant and the product side or of each element on the reactant and the product side. So first let's have N. So how do we count the number of atoms? So we count the number of atoms by simply looking at their subscript. Okay? If there is no subscript, meaning to say there is one atom. Okay? So first we have Na. So we have subscript 2. So therefore we have two atoms. And then, we have oxygen. So as you can see, we have oxygen for the compound sodium oxide and water. So what are we going to do? So since they are both oxygen, we just have to add their number of atoms. So we have one atom of oxygen for sodium oxide and one, one atom of oxygen for water. So one plus one, we have two atoms of oxygen. And then last, we have hydrogen. For hydrogen, it has a subscript of two, therefore, we have two atoms of hydrogen. Now, let's proceed with the product. For the product, as you can see, there's no subscript, meaning to say, they both or all of them have one atom. Alright, the third step is to determine which elements have different number of atoms. And by looking at it, all of the elements have an equal number of atoms from the reactant and the product side. So now, our target is to make them the same. So now, how are we going to make them the same? We have to put coefficient before the compound that contains the element with an equal number of atoms. 
So now we're going to look at our unbalanced chemical equation and look what compound contains these elements. So by looking at it, we could see that it is sodium hydroxide that contains all of these elements. So now, what are we going to do? We have to put coefficient before that compound that will make the equation balance. Alright, so let's proceed with the next step. So we have to put coefficient on the compound with an equal number of atoms. And that is NaOH. So the first coefficient that we're going to try is 2. So now, this coefficient will be distributed to the number of atoms of each element in the compound. So first, let's have Na. So 2 times 1, which is the number of atoms of Na, we have 2. 2 times 1 for the oxygen, we also have 2. And then 2 times 1 for hydrogen, we also have 2. And look at our chemical equation if it is balanced. So, do we have the same number of atoms for both the reactant and the product? So, yes. So, now, we will rewrite this chemical equation having a balanced equation. And this equation is the balanced equation. Next example that we have is this. Sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas to form solid sodium chlorate. So first, you have to analyze this word equation. So we need to identify first the reactants and the product of this certain chemical reaction. So here in this problem, we have sodium metal and chlorine gas as our reactants, while the sodium chloride is the product of this reaction. So next step, we need to simplify or write the simplification chemical equation of this reaction. So in the problem or in the word equation, we have once again sodium metal sodium metal and chlorine gas as our reactants while the solid sodium chloride So once again, this is the simplified word equation of the reaction. So now let us express these uh, substances into their respective chemical formulas. So next, okay, so first we have sodium. So we know that sodium, the symbol for sodium is Na. And then for chlorine, the symbol for chlorine is Cl. And then for sodium chloride, is NaCl. So again, we have sodium as Na, chlorine as Cl, and then sodium chloride as NaCl. So here we have to write the subscript 2 because once again, chlorine gas uh, exists as a diatomic molecule like uh, iodine, oxygen, nitrogen, and bromine. So unlike the first example, so we have here another keyword like metal, gas, and solid which represent uh, the state of these substances. Alright, so when we say metal, so this exists as solid, gas, in gaseous state, chlorine, and then solid sodium chloride. So as you can see, we have here the small letter S which is enclosed in a parenthesis. Okay, and then letter G once again enclosed in a parenthesis. So this once again represents the state of these substances in this chemical. Next step, after writing the chemical equation of this reaction, we need to identify the different elements that is involved in this type of reaction. So in the product or in the product and the reactant sides, so we have Na and then Cl or chlorine. Na and Cl. So next step, so after identifying the elements of this reaction on the reactant and the product side, we need to 
to count the number of atoms of each element. So in the reactant side, the sodium has one atom. And then here in chlorine, okay, so we have two atoms of chlorine here. Then next, okay, in the product side, so once again, we have one atom for sodium and one atom for chlorine. Again, we have one sodium atom and two chlorine atoms for the reactant side. And we have one sodium atom and one chlorine atom for the product side. We know that this chemical equation is still unbalanced. So to balance this chemical equation, we need to write coefficients before these substances, right? So if we write, okay, since this is a trial and error, so if we write 2 as a coefficient of NaCl, we're going to have okay, 2 times 1, we have 2 sodium atom, and then 2 times 1 for chlorine, we have 2 chlorine atoms. Okay? Balance na ba siya? Yes, the chlorine, okay, chlorine on the reactant and the product side is balanced, while the sodium in the reactant and the product side is still unbalanced. So, anong kailangan natin gawin? We need to write okay, the coefficient 2 at or before the sodium to make it 2. So, now, is it balanced? Yes. So, once again, we have okay, we have now 2 sodium atoms on the reactant and the product side and 2 atoms of chlorine on the reactant and the product side. So now we have a balanced chemical equation. So we write lang natin siya dito. Okay. okay. So we have 2 moles of sodium reacts with 1 mole of chlorine gas. Nalimutan natin yung sulat ang state. Okay, once again, 2 moles of sodium reacts with 1 mole of chlorine gas to form 2 moles of sodium chloride in solid state. So this is now the balanced chemical equation for the formation of sodium chloride. Now I want you to try to answer this one. Transform this word equation into a balanced chemical equation. You may pause on this part. Okay, let's check if your answer is correct. The reaction that we have is burning of sugar produces carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. Because of the word burning, we are able to know that this reaction is a combustion reaction. And based on the combustion reaction, there is always a fuel that reacts with oxygen gas and the product is always carbon dioxide and water. That is why we have glucose or sugar as C6H2O6, O2 as oxygen, CO2 as carbon dioxide, and H2O as water. So we have the balanced chemical equation of C6H12O6 plus 6O2 to form 6CO2 plus 6H2O. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you for watching. Goodbye! Bye.